Welcome to the English with Kirsty podcast from www.englishwithkirsty.com. Here I'll be sharing with you tips, information and other learning resources so that you can improve your business English. Hi and welcome to episode 172 of the English with Kirsty podcast and this is going to be a bit shorter this time because last week got a bit long all the things I wanted to share about working from home um, and I'm sorry about the sound quality on last week's episode it seemed okay when I was editing it but when I put it up it was it was really quiet so I hope that doesn't happen again I didn't want to republish it because then people might get content that they've already had and I don't want to do that but hopefully that won't happen again this time so this is going to be a slightly shorter episode but I did want to share a story with you because I think it's relevant to language learning and just before I start with the story the only uh, thing I want to tell you about this month if you're listening in April 2020 is that the 30 days to improve your English starts next week on Tuesday the 14th of April so if you want to join us for that then you need to sign up before the 14th of April because that's when it starts so it's something where you have an opportunity to do a task every day in your own time um, to improve your English Just different things that you can do from inside because many of the people listening to this are inside at the moment um, because of the, the situation, the health situation. So these are all things that you can do inside um, and will strengthen different areas of your, your language skills. OK, so that's the only notice I have this week. And otherwise, I just wanted to tell you a story because it's, it's something that happened to me last week. Um, and I blogged about it. If anyone reads the blog, you will already know this story. But I just wanted to let people know something that can happen to even experienced language learners, because I think it's easy to think, oh, when I feel confident, everything will be fine. My life will be sorted. But really, life isn't like that. It certainly gets easier. I mean, I remember a time when I um, met up with some people that I've been working with in Germany and and even something simple like um, not knowing where the cutlery was we, we were having food and, and everyone else had cutlery I didn't and I it wasn't obvious where it was and so I just thought oh well I won't eat then because then I don't have to ask anyone where to get the cutlery from and I genuinely believed that I really thought that because I thought I can't uh, I don't want to speak to anyone so I was really um, scared of speaking German and now I'm not I mean most of the time my working day involves speaking both languages but last week I signed up for a meeting I thought it was going to be really good there were other business owners there it was a German networking meeting and for once I could go because it was online everybody's doing things online now so great I can attend meetings all over the world so I signed up and I was really looking forward to it and I got there and then we started introducing ourselves and because it was on Zoom you don't really know what order people are going to be in and you don't know when your turn is going to be um, so that was okay I thought okay it can't be that hard so you have to give your name yep I know my name not difficult your job I can tell people what I do that's fine I, I do that a lot and three hashtags for your business what three hashtags for my business I mean I use hashtags I use them on Twitter I I don't have an Instagram account, but I, you know, I know what hashtags are. I use them on LinkedIn. It's all fine. But I, then I began to overthink it because I use hashtags that are specific to the content that I'm putting out. Um, I will look at what the content content is and think, okay, what's relevant? What will get people to to click on that? I don't have hashtags for my business, so I, I was thinking that. All right, I don't know when my turn is. I need to be creative. I need to think of three hashtags quickly. Come on, think of something. And I couldn't. I just, I just couldn't. Um, and so I left the meeting and I'm not proud of that, but I just thought, oh, I can't do this. And it really made me think in my own language, I would have probably not chickened out, even if it said I need a bit more time, even if I just said I, I don't actually work like that or I, you know, just made something up quickly on the spot. I don't even think these hashtags needed to be in German. So it, it wasn't a big um, wasn't a big deal it wasn't a difficult thing but the thing for me was I hadn't expected that and it kind of caught me off balance it made me question myself and when you feel like that it happens more in another language because in your own language you can often recover quicker um, think on your feet and get yourself out of the situation and I didn't this time <laughs> so I just you know even when you think you're a confident language user sometimes things like that happen and it's not 
whether or not that happens, it's what you do afterwards. I mean, there was no great um, consequences for me for leaving. I don't think anybody really knew I was there apart from a couple of people that I know. Um, so it's no big deal. Um, I wasn't supposed to be contributing to that meeting. Um, I could have had a hundred other reasons for leaving. Um, nobody really needs to know that it was language related apart from the fact that I've just told everybody on my podcast now and they will know. But I wanted to use this as an example because when I used to, when I was a teenager, when I was a, a, a preteen, I used to love horse riding. And every week I used to go to the stables with the horses and ride them. And jumping was my favorite thing. That was so cool. Um, and I loved it. But I always remember if you, the advice I was given, if you fall off, you should get back on again as soon as it's safe to do so. So obviously not if you're injured, but the idea is that if you come off the horse, um, getting back on sooner rather than later means that you're, you don't have time to think, oh no, I don't want to go riding, I might fall off again, it's scary and you know, all these things. So if you fall off and it's safe to do so, you know, get back on and then it won't, um, there won't be time for these feelings and thoughts, negative thoughts to build up. So um, that's, that's kind of the same with language learning. If something goes wrong, if something doesn't really go according to plan, um, this there was no real consequences for me for this, apart from the fact that I didn't join in the meeting and I didn't make some connections that I would have maybe made otherwise. And that's a bit disappointing. Um, but there, there will be other opportunities to do that. I'm sure they will do this again. And I will I will sign up again. I'm not going to let this make me think, oh, I can't do it because I don't know what they're going to ask me. It's a learning curve and it's, you know, it's every day is a lesson with the language. Sometimes you'll do really well and you'll feel great that you had a really good conversation. Other times you might do what I did and just um, quietly exit a Zoom meeting because you were taken off guard and weren't really sure what to say in an introduction round. It's it's really an, a non-story. It's not really a big deal. But I think the thing we need to remember is that I felt really bad after that and quite annoyed with myself that I hadn't just pulled myself together and done it. And yeah, that would have been the best thing to do. But sometimes, especially now, I think everybody's under a bit more pressure. It's also a good message to be kind to yourself and maybe you won't do as well. Maybe you're doing an exam and, and you don't you don't do the best that you know you could have because you got really stressed out. Or maybe you're doing a job interview in English for the first time and it doesn't go quite as well as you'd hoped. Or, or you think afterwards of all the really good things that you could have said. Maybe you're attending some kind of national event at work and somebody wants to involve you and you, you give the quickest answer you can think of so that the spotlight isn't on you anymore and you can just blend back into the background. Maybe you're invited to something and you say no, even though you really want to say yes, because you're thinking, oh, I don't know if my language skills are good enough. I think we all do it. And that's what I wanted to say here, that we all do these things that you think, oh, that was a wasted opportunity. I could have done that. Or why didn't why didn't you do it? You know, you could have done it. That's certainly how I felt after this meeting. But, you know, it's normal. We're human beings and even people who are confident, who use the language a lot, may still find that something happens that they really didn't expected, didn't really didn't expect. And they, yeah, don't do their best. They they don't react in the way that they'd like to. So that was just an encouragement today that we all, it happens to all of us. And if it does, it's not what you did unless you lost thousands and thousands of pounds or something. Yeah, that's a big deal. But most of the time, it's a bigger deal to you than it is for everyone else. And it's about how you deal with it, how you move on, how you get back on the horse and how you the next day is better, how you try again until you can do it. And sometimes language learning is a bit like that. You, you try again until you can do it. It's not always quick wins. You just have to put the work in sometimes. So that's what I wanted to share with you this week, my story. Um, and when the next one of these events happens, I will be signing up. I will go back and I will not allow myself to run away. So is there something like that for you that you've either been avoiding or you didn't do or you felt bad about doing badly so you didn't try again? Is there something like that? And if there is, is there something you can do to put it right or to try again? So. I hope everybody's doing well, stay safe and have a good week and have fun learning English. And if any of you want to join the 30 days to improve your English, you can go to the show notes page, which is englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast slash episode 17, 
of 172 <laughs> or you can go to englishiskirsty.com slash 30 days and you'll find the information there. This story is also a blog post and so if you want to read that I will link it on the show notes page too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the English with Kirsty podcast. If you have any questions or comments my email address is kirsty at englishwithkirsty.com or you can go to www.englishwithkirsty.com slash podcast where you'll find information about the individual episodes.